Hello everybody and welcome once again to Forever Stranded. Now, in this episode, I want to get some slime balls, because I haven't got very many slime balls. So let's have a quick look at what we've got and how we're going to get those. Get more. And I'm not going to use sieving to do this. So, let's have a look. First of all, I have got in here 19 slime balls. Not very many. So let's go over here. Because I've got some turrets on here and they actually shoot things. So I want to do it somewhere at the back. Like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down a oak barrel. An oak barrel. And put into that some water. and Like that. And then into that water I'm going to put a bucket of milk. Like that. And you'll see this is on the top here. It says... Growing slime, 17%. So what I'm going to do, <coughs> excuse me a second, come down here, and I've changed a few things. Here I've got um, an ender chest, and in this ender chest we've got fish, and their fish are actually coming from here, from the mob factory. And at the moment I have got in here a guardian, so it's doing guardians at the moment. Now I reckon this slime is finished. 76%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a wood prism out of here too. And then when this is ready, which is nearly ready, it will consume the, the um, crook. Slime ready. I right click this now. And then you, you can see the slime jumps up. So we, yes, I caught it. So we've got two slime balls and a slime in here. So let's go up here and replace the Guardian because I don't need too much more stuff from the Guardian like that. And I want to put down the new one. Now, if I'm doing this from sort of away, so this is the, the, the one with nothing in it. So if I put this down, for example, here like this, and then I can right click this here and nothing happens. So if I put this one down instead first, which is the spawner grinder, Pick up this. So the empty one is this one. Like that. Put this on here and then right click it with this. Then you see now it's a slime. So that works and it consumes the prism. Now I think the slime one is this one. Let's just double check it. Yes, good. So now I'll put that on there and then we have to wait for that to do its business. So I'm waiting for that. Let's go pick up this and pick up the barrel. Where's my mattock? And go back. So what I'm going to do now is just to check. I'm not sure if it's turned on or off yet. So that was 19 before. So it's still 19. So what I'm going to do is go downstairs here like this and have a look at this chest that's where it's coming into it is and I'm just going to basically turn this one off if I can get to it here so at the moment it's always active let's just deactivate this never active so we'll see hopefully in a few minutes we'll get some slime so we'll check this we'll come back and check that now <coughs> the other thing I've been doing is setting up some automation but what I want to do here is this is a crusher from extra utilities and what I want to do with this is I want to automate this so I basically I come down here I want to basically give it some cobblestone because this takes cobblestone in here and produces gravel but it needs power so the way I'm going to do this as usual just digging my way down here a bit is to get some is to get a sterling generator Put a sterling generator on it, which I think I've got prepared here, and a tank, of course. So we put the sterling generator here, and then we put the tank down here, like that. And then we need to go down a bit further to get I don't need to go down to about here. So on this, we need to put a crucible. So I should have a crucible in the back here. Like that. 
and then I need to feed this crucible underneath I need to put some heat source and this time I'm going to use lava this is in my way as well, let's get it out of the way and over here too so I need to get rid of this one really so how far are we down from the from the top here so the one, two, three, four so what I've got here is a bucket of lava and a bucket of water and I want one of these upgrades and I want some cobblestone which I don't have there so let's just get a, some cobblestone out of the system I just want one so I put the cobblestone down here like this in the middle this side here I'm going to put the bucket of lava like that and then I'm going to take some sand I've got here and just make sure that the lava doesn't run everywhere so put some sand down there like that and I'm going to do the same over this side I shall put some sand down first with a bucket of water oops wrong one, that one like that and I can fill in this one, I don't need this either so let's put the sand down here so what I'm going to put on here now is a transfer node of items and into this transfer node we're going to put one of these mining upgrades I don't need two, they do actually go faster and that produces cobblestone very much like the um, what was it called in 1.7 the world interaction upgrade so that's doing what the world interaction upgrade was and costing 10 GP so now we're going to take that and we're going to feed that into the crucible so if we can right click like that now that should start to get cobblestone in and it's starting to generate lava I'm also going to use this one to feed it into the top here like this I don't I don't like things connecting even though it's not going to do anything so I'm going to take the wrench here let's right click those off so if we look at this now we've got cobblestone in so the only thing that's now required is for a bucket to be in here, like this. So we need a bucket in here to take the lava, and we need to configure this. So at the bottom, we want to have it, that was left drag as it were. So basically we want to right click this to be pull, so now it's pulling lava from below. And right click this twice to push pull, three times and that'll send the bucket of lava down and produce power so that's how that's going to work now here I'm going to put a piece of sandstone because if I put a piece of sand on it'll drop down and cover the water here I don't care because it's no problem at all and we're just filling the rest oh, most of it anyway I'm going to leave a few bits so I can actually see what's going on I want to see this actually to activate itself so now, at this time we should have got some slimes coming in here. We've got six slimes and four XP shards, which is great. So I can actually put those there and then turn this back on again. So we now know it's working. Always active. And then they'll be fed into the system. What you also didn't see is I've automated the, well, extract, automatically extracting the items out of <coughs> the, the quarries and the void miners. And one thing I've got here, some, some from the quantum quarry, we're getting some interesting things, like this one here. This one is, is it dilithium ore? Yes, I think so. And this one's rutile ore. So these are coming, and this one is bauxite, saltpeter, and last one's empty. What have we got here? Uranium. These are all coming from the, um, the quantum quarry. And the next thing I've been doing is I've been automating some of this as well. So it's still not kicked in. How much have we got in there yet? 461. So I've got plenty of automation going on here for, for different bits and um, ME interfaces around a molecular assembler. And I've done the same over this side with a simpler system with just that. Does that have to touch? I don't think that has to touch, does it? If it does, I just get another molecular assembler and put it in there. So. So what I've got in here, I 
think this is going to be programmed to use gravel. This one here is programmed to encode dirt from coarse dirt. So let's see how this works. Let's get my crafting terminal up and let's have a look at dirt. Now, it says I've got 7,600 coarse dirt. Now let's just view the craftable side of this and then craft some coarse dirt. Let's take craft 10. Before I do that, let me just come over here so we can actually see it doing it. Because it'll come in here, but it's very fast for the coarse dirt. Um, maybe I'll do 20, then it's a bit longer. Start. And then you can see just in here, it's starting to craft. It's already finished. So that then has already completed. Now, from that coarse dirt, we can do the same again. So we can craft dirt. So let's do 20 dirt. And there is a, actually a slight problem here, but it's nothing to do with the process, I don't think. And here it's going through here. And that's quite fast. And this is the same setup as Xhedra did in his video. Wait for it to finish. How many has it got to do? 12. It's probably not going to finish. And the reason it's not going to finish here for is because dirt is automatically coming into the system anyway. So I cancel that. And that's coming in from the, the void or res, the void resource miner. So in the time that was being processed, it came in. So I reckon it's just not working properly. Well, it's counting those as being into the system. So it then messes up this count. So what have we got here? We've got an auto breaker, which is set to deactivated, and it's being activated by the scanner. And here I've got the auto placer, and here I've got the mechanical user. And in the me mechanical user, I've got an unbreakable hatchet. So there's not going to be a big deal with that one. And use on block and right click on the upper left, left slot only. So that I reckon is the only way we're going to be able to achieve this. So what's happening here, we're now creating gravel, I think. And it's fairly slow. Yes, there we go. And it's got a second slot here. I'm not exactly sure. Click for recipes. What the second slot's going to be used for. Oh, blaze rods. Bones. Wool. There's quite a few recipes in there, so I don't need to see these. These double up. But I think we can do better with poppies in these in the in the sagmill. So now I'm going to fill in this this sand in here so we don't have to see it. And I can't put one in there because it's got that in the way. Now I want to have a look at the sagmill, because the sagmill's interesting as well. And yeah, this way sagmill. I've got no flint. Let's get some flint out of the system because that's always useful should always be in a sack mill. Um, I don't do that, I want to do it from here. And I need to be on stored items. So. Storm's coming, not that I care anymore because we've got the weather deflector. Um, so we can put all this flint into here like that. Now it's control shift click. And then that comes very fast down into here as well. Well, that was being that's because it's being pulled and this is a small storage crate now if we look at this and, and press shift here you see the main output is 120 percent the bonus output is 125 and the power reduction is 15 but we can do better than that let's come over here and let's look for this we've got some dark steel walls let's create some of these let's create 10 or 15. One click too many. Let's put those into here instead of this flint. I have to be faster than that, don't I? I'll do it the other way around. And shift hold on this. So now its main output was 150%. So last time was 120, 25. Next bonus output is 200, and it was 150 before. And power reduction is doubled from 15 to 30%. So these are better, a little bit more expensive. So I'll save those for 
things that actually we need them for. So I'll put those into there like that, sort it, and then I'll put this into there, and they'll get picked up last. Which is quite good. I quite like that. Now let's have a look at this. I've got some more bits and pieces which are interesting. Like I've got the train light. I showed that in the previous episode. And since the previous episode, as you can see, I've been going around here lighting up the area with the train lighter. Here it is. And it's night time. There are less mobs now. Before there are hundreds. Now they've got to come from further away. So I'm getting much less stuff in here now, which is great. See, so just not very much stuff in here at all. And all the and all the old gold armour and the rest of it, the leather armour and the witch's hats are getting thrown away straight away. Because I don't really don't need those. This is the, the wood farm that, and also the cactus farm at the top and they're both being fed into these barrels. So what I'm going to do is have a quick sleep because they're not going to work. The rate, even with... Let's have a look at what I've set up first of all. And this was actually a combination of two, two people that was doing this. There was Mech LSD and also Xhedra were both doing the same basic principle. But this was the wood one was from Xhedra and the um, Cactus Farm was from Mech LSD. Now the, in here I've got three pulverizers, pulverizing all the time. This one is upgraded with three speed upgrades. Doesn't seem to be much faster. And this one here is just an ordinary one. The reason I haven't extended the, upgraded those is because it's can I say it's actually it's the output here is already full, but the power the power usage is quite high. And you see these these barrels are not even getting near towards the end here of being full. So what's the OSS telling us? Twenty nine thousand dirt, and it's not really coming in that fast. You look at this one it's two or three one every four five seconds or something like that so i don't think that's going to be a solution to get one million so that's most of the video done for today or what i'd like to show you but there's one more thing as usual and that's this watch this for magic oops don't want the bag holding doing that now turn those on do it again a place to block a stand ah. And that's going over there. Well, I should probably be best doing it with an empty hand, wouldn't I? So I right click this button, this, this block here, and right click it again, and it turns them off. Let's have a look underneath here. Underneath here, I've got a contact lever from Random Things. Random Things has some interesting blocks in it. So I'll put this back again. What it does, this contact lever, is it, when it's one block below, or whichever direction, this is the facing side. Oops, I've done that again. It turn, it activates the redstone signal. So let's go and have a look downstairs. Probably got some stuff in that that's being picked up. And see how this has been done. So here you've got I've got some cables and there's flames are coming down or drops or something. And these cables are um, redstone conduits. When you place one of these conduits it doesn't place immediately. So what you have to do is you have to go up here. You have to sort of right click this with the this particular connection, with the Yetter wrench, and it'll turn it on. So all I've done here is I've got the that contact lever feeding all of these out here. And as soon as it goes on, they get turned on. But also you can do this. Let's have a look. Where am I going to? I want to go back out again, don't I? I'll turn that off. I don't need it running for the time being. I've also turned, I actually have done something else. I've turned on, let's stand away from that. I'll turn this one here. On that gearbox, we'll then activate the uh, the bellows. So this then should go blue, as you can see. Turn it off again, stops the barrel, and they will actually turn off. Like that, as you can see, they're getting red. Orange slowly. Let's just take an empty hand and right click this one, that one, turns everything off. 
and it's a lot quieter and there's a lot less activity so that's a, always a good thing especially in Minecraft I've got too much stuff on it and I'm getting a bit hungry so let's do that now there's more you can do with this there's redstone stuff from random things that was really cool some interesting bits so look in my bag here what I want to do is put that down there like that I've got a lamp controller from actual editions I only want one of those and some lamps oops that wasn't lamps that was lamp controllers like this I've also got the basic redstone interface and a redstone activator and a and a redstone tool. So I'll have a quick look at these and have a look at the recipes for that. This one's basically like a redstone torch with another red stick underneath it. This one is a stable ender pearl, four ingots of iron and four redstone. Stable ingots is just fairly straightforward. Nothing special there. Pretty expensive, but let's show you what these can do. So let's put this lamp controller down here. And let's put on this lamp controller some lamps. So let's do it like this. Done. Now, when you give this block here a redstone signal, I'm picking up more cactus, and I can give a redstone signal to things with this. So for example, Let's go in here and close the door. Oops, it doesn't work if I close that, do that, and that. And then I right click the door, it opens. And the same from the other side. So that gives it a redstone signal. I can do the same for this. It does it's not latched, so it turns it on. Like a like a like a button does. Okay. Now, with this basic redstone interface, you can put it down at a distance like this take the redstone tool here and you see it's pointing somewhere it's actually pointing to that spot so what we do is we, we shift right click this here like that and then we come to this item here and turn it on and activate that so now it's pointing to there little bug turn that off so now when I get a lever out let's get a lever out here put a lever on here or even get use that redstone activator like this. Does that work? It doesn't work probably because we've got a lever on it. If I turn the lever on, ah, forget, it turns these on. The lamps are now on. I'll do that again. Oh, if I get to the right position, you can see them going off, off and on better. There you go. And they will turn those, all of those lights are going on and off. So that's a, a way of doing rem remote redstone control. If I remove it, if I remove this, I'm sure that works actually. If I just yes, you see now they're on. I'm a bit far away, but never mind. And the range of this, this is the basic one, is 16 blocks. So let's pick it up, and I'm probably going to pick it up, and it's going to probably disappear off into that, into that topper over there, uh, into that item collector. No, I didn't today. But some of these will do watch. And the last one, sand. As you can see, lots of stuff went in there, and then my inventory is getting full again. Let's just get rid of some of the stuff. So. We've done the woot. Should put that away. I've got some lamps. Put those over here. Wood. Speaking of wood as well. Probably from the tree farm. So I can't take the this at the moment. Let's have another quick look in here. Put some of this stuff away. Oh, I can put away those and those. That will get away there. So I can take the wood now. So I just right click what's away and it goes all of that goes away. 
and we can just put away the last of this stuff that I was doing, demonstrating actually this wasn't it redstone that one the redstone tool and the redstone activator and the tool and the, and the lever will get rid of that as well I probably should take the redstone torch away because you need that for actual additions Right. I think that's about it. Let's have another check at this. So now we've got 40 slime balls, so they're building up reasonably nicely. So, I'm going to say bye bye for now, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. If there's any, got any questions about anything, let me know, put it in the comments, and I'll answer you straight away. So, until then, oops, I want the rock this one. Bye for now.